So, in the last two classes, uh, we saw some direct proof methods. We looked at uh, Frege's uh, proportional calculus and then we looked at Hilbert style direct proofs in which you can make assumptions uh, uh, which you can end up using shorter proofs. So, let me uh, give you a small exercise uh, to begin this class. Uh, show that this formula is true. You can use any method that we have studied so far. The importance of this formula is to show that uh, uh, it's useful in the sense that if you want to convert everything into Frege style systems, then if you are given some problem where you are given A, B, C, D, and so on, and you want to prove some, let's say P. Then according to the deduction theorem, we can reduce this to showing that A and B and C and D implies P is a tautology, but this still contains the AND symbol essentially inside that. right? Uh, whereas, Frege's proportional calculus uses only implication and, and this thing. So, this exercise that I have given you will give you some hint as to how to convert a sentence of this kind, where you have a set of premises and a conclusion into a formula which can be handled in Frege system essentially. It is also an exercise for you to try out the, the proof method essentially. But today, we want to look at uh, indirect proof methods and in particular, we want to look at a very well known method called the Tableau method. So, if you look up any books of one of my favorite uh, authors, uh, uh, which is uh, Raymond Smullyan, who has written a lot of interesting books on puzzles and uh, And logic, he is a logician essentially. So, this particular book that I am talking about is called Logical Labyrinths, but he has written many books The Lady and the Tiger, and uh, what is the name of this book, and all kinds of interesting puzzles essentially. So, he was one of the people instrumental in popularizing the Tableau method essentially, and therefore, uh, I have taken this particular material from his book essentially. Now, interestingly, this Tableau method has its roots in semantic uh, methods. And it is only recently that uh, people have realized that it actually gives you a very nice proof system essentially. So, what is the difference between a semantic method and a proof system? In a semantic method you are reasoning with truth values, whereas in a proof system you are not reasoning with truth values, but you are simply replacing formulas with new formulas and you have some procedure which will only look at the form or all the formulas and decide whether you have terminated or not essentially. So, if you recall uh, we had uh, said that when we were trying to show that this formula P and P implies Q implies Q is a tautology we had said that let us try and show that it is false actually. And if we are not able to show that it is false, then we will be forced to conclude that it is a tautology. So, you can see that it is a approach of proof by contradiction. And moreover, we are trying to satisfy its negation and trying to say we can find a value which will make it false essentially. And we are not able to show that, then we are forced to conclude that we cannot find any value which will make it false and therefore, it must be a true formula essentially. So, that is a kind of the flavor of the Tableau method. So, what did we do that time? So, let me just recall uh, 
we said that if you want to make this formula true, you must make the left hand side, if you want to make this formula false sorry, you must make the left, left hand side true and the right hand side false essentially. So, that means, q is false and whatever is there is on the left hand side is true, which means you have to show that p and p implies false is true. We want to show that this formula is true essentially. Now, if you want to show that this formula is true, you must show that this is true and you must show that this is true, right? because it is an and, and is true only when both the components are true. So, if p is true, then we are forced to show that t implies false is true. Unfortunately, that is not possible. So, we cannot make this formula false. So, we are forced to con conclude that the original formula which we wrote in red is, is true essentially. Now, the tableau method is very similar to this except that it is used to show that something is unsatisfiable. And in a kind of a corollary, we try to show that it is satisfiable and when we fail to show that it is uh, that satisfiable, we are forced to show that it is unsatisfiable. So, remember the connection between unsatisfiable form formulas and tautologies. If you want to show that something is a tautology, you can take its negation and try to show that it is un unsatisfiable. And now, we are saying that to show that something is unsatisfiable, try to show that it is satisfiable. If you fail, then it must be unsatisfiable essentially. Hmm. So, let us look at uh, the tableau method and we will start with this example to see how it works essentially. So, the tableau method also works with a set of rules. Incidentally, the tableau method became very popular because people found that it could first of all easily be extended to first order logic, which is what we are going to be interested in. But not only that, but also things like modal logics, which we may or may not get time to look at very much, but also things like description logics, which we will look at much later in the course. Uh, and we found it can be shown that these methods carry forward to other specialized kind of logics and, there, and as we will see, it is a very simple method to implement. It is a very straightforward algorithm. So, it makes the job of writing a proof system much easier as opposed to the direct proof methods, where we had to either somehow make guesses about what assumptions to make or we had to somehow figure out what instance of a tautology we need to start working with essentially. So, if we remember the proofs that we did in previous this thing, we had to guess that instead of A implies B implies A, we wrote for example, that A implies A implies A implies A. So, when you did the proof for A implies A. So, this kind of guesswork is totally done away with in indirect methods and these are very simple methods which can be used in algorithms. Okay. So, what tableau methods try to do is uh, uh, simplify the formula. Okay. We will use the term formula and sentence interchangeably. So, it is a formula of your well formed, uh, it is a well formed formula of your of your given logic, but we are also treating them as sentences. So, we will use the two terms interchangeably essentially. And essentially, when what do we mean by simplify that break it down into its atomic parts essentially. And if and if we have both p and not p as part of the simplified formula, then we cannot satisfy that formula. Right? Because if, if your knowledge base has p and not p, there is no valuation which, which will make that knowledge base true, because one of them will necessarily be false essentially. So, the termination criteria for, for tableau methods and also for the resolution method that we will see later is that you are arriving at a contradiction essentially. You are trying to satisfy something and arriving at a contradiction essentially. So, what are these rules for simplification? Uh, we will work with only a few operators the and or implication and not essentially, but you can write similar rules for other operators as well essentially. So, the rules are as follows that you can replace 
negation negation of p with p. So, that is the rule for negation. Then the rule for disjunction, there are two rules. One is to do with not p or q. We can replace not p or q. Not p or q will be when will not p or q will be true? When not p is true or not q is and not q is true, right? So both must be true. So we can replace this with with not p and not q. So the way to read this is that on the on the top of the line is what you are working with, and on the bottom of the line is what you have simplified it. So we have actually thrown away the disjunction connective or the all connective and produced two formulas, but both of them must be true basically. So if when not p is true and when not q is true, only then not p or q will be true. On the other hand, if we have p implies p or q, then this formula can be true either when p is true or when q is true, right? Or both obviously. So we write this as follows. So we introduce a branch here. So we split the knowledge base into two, two, two knowledge bases. In one we put p, and in the other we put q. Remember that the goal of this entire exercise is to find a satisfying valuation essentially. So we are saying that if we can find p to be true, then our formula and all other formulas that were there will be true essentially. So p or q can be made either by making p true or by making q true. So we introduce that. Then let's look at and. So if we have p and q, then it's simple. You have to make both true. But if you have not of p and q, then we can replace it by two branches: not p and not q. So if at least one of them is false, then not of p and q will be false essentially. And finally, the implication. If we have not of p implies q, then we must show that p that either p that that sorry both p is true and not q is true. That's what we were trying to show when we show an implication is true. Show that the left hand side is true and the right hand side is false. Uh, then it will be true essentially. But to show that it is false, the the left hand side must be true and the right hand side is false essentially. So if you want to show that p implies q is false. Which is to show that not of p implies q is true, p must be true and q must be false. Only then is uh, not of p implies q true. Okay. Whereas if you just look at p implies q, we can make it true either by making p false or by making q true. So, if you look at the truth table for p implies q, you can see that essentially. You can there are three rows in which p, p implies q is true, and in 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 one row not p is true, in one row q is true, and in one row both are true. So those are the three rows, and there's one row where p implies q is false, which is when p is true and q is false essentially. So these are the seven rules that we will need in a Tableau system using these three four connectives essentially, and our goal will be to take a negation of a formula. And try to show that it is false, and then we will try to see that it, it doesn't become false. So let's work with the, the example that we were looking at, which is this P and P implies Q. The whole thing implies Q. This is a tautology on which. Uh, modus ponens is, is based. So, let us try to show that this formula is true by the tableau method. So, if you want to show it by the tableau method, you must take its negation which I will write in blue here and then try to show that try to simplify the formula essentially. So, I am trying to show that it is false essentially and I will eventually fail in showing that it is false essentially. And we have these seven rules. So, the first rule that we can 
apply is the negation of the implication rule, which says that the left hand side must be true and the right hand side must be false. So, the left hand side is p and p implies q and the right hand side is not q. Once we have dealt with a formula, we can actually throw it away, but since we want to keep the proof, we will not actually throw it away, but maybe we will just put a tick mark to say that we have finished with that formula essentially. We do not really need it anymore essentially, because it has been replaced by two equivalent formulae, which is here. Now, there is one little bit of heuristic that you will you can use whenever you want to select which formula to simplify, it makes sense to select one in which does not introduce branching essentially because that way the proof will be more compact essentially. If you if you introduce branches in early, earlier part of the proof, then you will have to handle each of those branches separately essentially. So, as long as you can do away with branches, just do the. So, so what I have written on the left hand side here. So, they have no branches. They do not introduce branches into, into your structure we are trying to write it in a structured fashion. So, we would prefer those those uh, rules as opposed to rules which, which this way. In, in this case of course, we do not really have an option. Uh, the, the, the second formula we have introduced is already atomic. I mean it just has a negation and you cannot really do much with that. So, we have this other thing which is. So, let us deal with that. So, that is done. So, let me use this. So, we need to have p and we have p implies q. So, we are done with uh, the first two formulas. We are left with three formulas now, not q, p and p implies q. And remember that we are trying to make it, we are trying to satisfy this formula, which is a negation of what was v 2 essentially. Now, we apply the implication rule and we show that you have not p here and q here. So, we have split the database into two, one which is which, which goes on the down the left branch of the tree, one which goes on the right branch of the tree, but we can see that neither is consistent. If you look at this not p here, then it conflicts with this not p here. So, that branch is said to be closed in terms of tableau methods. At the same time, this q here conflicts with this q here. So, this is also closed. Which means that we were not able to show that uh, the negation of this formula was satisfiable. So, it must be unsatisfiable and the negation of the negation which is the original formula we were interested in must be true. So, what we wrote on top in the red becomes true with the negation sign in blue that is unsatisfiable essentially. Right? So, this is basically the flavor of the, the tableau method. So, let us look at a couple of more examples. So, let us try to prove this uh, formula that I just gave you at the beginning of the class, which is P and Q implies R, the whole thing implies P, sorry, implies Q implies R. So, if you want to show that this formula is true, we will work with its negation. So, we will put a negation sign at the beginning of it and then apply the tableau method. There is only one thing we can do to start with the left hand side must be shown to be true p and q implies r and the right hand side must be shown to be false. Okay, so, we have done with the first formula. Then 
it is better to choose the third formula here, because you know that will not introduce any branching, whereas the first formula would in second formula would introduce branching. So, we deal with the third formula first, which means P must be introduced and not of Q implies R must be introduced. Again, it is better to do deal with the last formula first, because it will not introduce branching, whereas the second formula which is still pending with us, we will do that later essentially. So, we will do this one next, which means Q and not R. So, so far of course, there is no contradiction, but we still have to worry about the, the second formula, which is what we will do now. So, there are two branches here, one is P and Q must be false or R must be true. Right. So, this is remember this comes from here, this, this whole thing comes from here. So, immediately we can see that this branch is closed, because it is conflicting with not R. Now, to make not P and Q true, we can either make P false or we can make Q false. So, it introduces two branches, but both are closed, because not P is closed with this P and not q is closed with this q and this not r was closed with this. So, all three branches that we had in our database was are closed. So, there is no way that we can try to satisfy the negation of the formula. So, the original formula must be true essentially. Okay, let me do one last example. Which is uh, Frege's then two. So, if you remember, that is P implies Q implies R. The whole thing implies P implies Q implies P implies R. So, as usual, because we are using the tableau method, we work with its negation and apply the rules one by one. So, initially we must have P implies Q implies R and the negation of this P implies Q implies P implies R. So, that we are done with the first one. Now, we handle the third one again for the same reason that we want to re as an exercise, you can try doing it in the order in which you generate them. You will see that you will still get a split knowledge base, which is closed, but you will probably end up splitting it into more parts essentially. Or at least you will end up doing more work essentially, because you will have many branches to look at. Essentially. So, let us finish with this one. So, P and not R. Now, we go back to the first formula. So, there are two branches that either not P must be true or Q implies R must be true. Now, this not P gets closed because of the fact that P is there. So, we are left with only one branch here and we can either look at this one or we can look at that P implies Q essentially. Supposing we do not P implies Q, P implies Q then again we are left with not P, which for the same reason will be closed, because it conflicts with the same P up there and Q. Essentially. Remember that this step is because of the fact that we were simplifying this, this one here essentially. And then, when we are left with uh, Q implies R, we get not Q, which immediately gets closed. 
and R which uh, also gets closed because of this factor. So, here is a tableau proof for Pegues then two formula, formula. So, one thing you would have noticed is that this method, the tableau method, has no axioms. The only thing we worked with was the formula that we wanted to, to be shown to be true essentially. So, unlike direct proof methods where you have you need some kind of axioms to apply the rules, here you do not necessarily need that because your goal is not to produce the formula that you want to show to be true, but you can in fact work on that formula. And in fact, we work with the negation of that formula essentially. So, that is one, one simplification in some sense that you know, but it, it still has as many uh, rules as we have connectives essentially. In the next class, we will look at method called the resolution method. which has the property that no axioms and one rule. Just like Frege's proportional calculus had only one rule of inference which is modus ponens, the resolution method also has one rule of inference which is called the resolution rule which you will see in the next class essentially and it has no axioms essentially. So, you can imagine that uh, if you write a theorem prover, there is only one rule you can apply, all you have to do is to decide which, which formula is to apply it to essentially. Hmm. This method was found by Robinson and it is it's a fairly recent method, 1965 or so essentially. Hmm. And since Robinson introduced the resolution method, it has actually revolutionized this whole field of theorem proving. It gave it a flip to theorem proving and a lot of people started working with automatic theorem provers essentially. So, it is a very interesting method and we will really take up the resolution method for first order logic when we move to first order logic essentially. And we will uh, see how we can build theorem provers in that essentially. But before we go to first order logic, we will study the method in, in proportional logic because that gives us a feel of the method and then we will introduce first order logic. Okay. So, this whole exercise that we have done in the last 5 or 6 classes studying proportional logic is simply so that we get the foundations about logical reasoning in place. We know what we now understand what you mean by deduction, what you mean by a proof, how can you generate proofs and things like that. Proportional logic by itself is not a very powerful language uh, in the sense that you cannot even for example, solve the Socratic argument which is all men are mortal, Socrates is a man and therefore, Socrates is mortal. For that you need first order logic, but having got the basic machinery for logic in place, we will be able to carry forward and we will be able to move much faster over first order logic essentially. Okay. So, in the next class we will look at the resolution method, maybe we will try to prove some of these same formula using the resolution method and then move on to first order logic after that. Okay.